believe that everything happens for a reason. People change so that you can learn to let go. Things go wrong so that you can learn to appreciate them when they're right. And sometimes good things fall apart so better things can fall together. Always waiting for everything to be perfect before I live my life. I'm always waiting for everything to be perfect before I live my life. There's only one way. If you're at the bottom, there's only one way. But you got to look up. And when you look up, there's somebody there waiting for you. If you truly believe that you have the power within you to change, the first step would be saying, I have to take responsibility for myself right now because I got to start thinking differently. I got to start acting differently. I got to start feeling different. It's going to be hard. If it was easy, everybody would be doing this. But how is self-love born? When the person sits through the fire and sits through all of that anxiety, all that hatred, all that anger, and keeps lowering the volume, sooner or later, the body's going to release it. Dangerous to dwell on past mistakes. People sort of define themselves by the worst moments that they've ever had. You know, they're, they're stuck in failures that they had, like when they were first getting jobs, and they always think that they're a loser, and they, they don't like the feeling of failure, so they keep low expectations so that they never have to feel that. You got to get through failure. It's very important. And you get through it by just picking yourself back up and moving forward and going. Whenever you feel negative or unhappy about anything, you say, wait a minute, I'm responsible. I'm responsible for my life. I'm responsible for what happens. I can't change the past, so I'm not going to spend a second worrying about the past. I'm going to become so busy working on my future and my goals that I don't have time to think about the past. Most people let what's happening now control what they're thinking. They don't like it, and they're waiting for it to change. It'll never change. What they don't understand, what's coming is a reflection of what they're seeing inside. Everything you're thinking about is coming to you. It's all about the mind. And it's got to happen inside first if you want it to happen outside at all. It isn't easy to keep going, especially when you don't believe that things can get better. You never know for sure what's coming, but you can choose to believe. Even if there's no guarantee, hope and belief might be all you need to keep going, to give you something to look forward to. So just know that even if it's hard right now, it won't always be, because it can get better. Don't waste the failing, because oftentimes, what do we do when things don't go the way we want it to go? We throw the experience away, right? But we learn more in moments of defeat than we do when we get the victory, because when you get the victory, nobody can tell you nothing. But when you lose, you listen it. The task is to recognize that you are uniquely special. You have something to give, some talent no one else shares in quite the same way. And the second one reads, wherever you stand, be the soul of that place. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. The most fundamental and major decision that you have to make in your life is this. Do I live in a friendly or a hostile universe? Which is it? Is it a universe that is filled with hostility and anger and people wanting to hate each other and people wanting to kill each other? Is that what you see? Because when you see the world that way, that's exactly what you will create for yourself in your life. The quality of my life is controlled by two things, meaning and emotion. The meaning you give to things controls the emotion that you feel. People come up with different meanings and that produces different emotions. And those emotions make you make different decisions. When you're angry, you're going to decide differently than when you're playful or grateful or excited. So the secret to life is controlling meaning and emotion. Why? Wow. We all ask why we should work this hard. Why take that many classes? You know, why take the notes? Why read the books? Why work that hard? Why? Good question, why? Best answer to why, I think, is the second question. Why not? Why not see how many books you can read, how many classes you can take, how many skills you can develop? Why not see how valuable you can become to the marketplace, to your friends, to your family? Why not see what you can make of yourself? Why not see how far you can go, how much you can see, how much you can earn, how much you can share? Why not? Wouldn't you want to know what would happen if you spent just one year giving it your absolute all, giving everything your absolute all? 
giving your diet your absolute all, giving your workouts your absolute all, giving your career your absolute all, giving your relationships your absolute all, how much different would your life look? How much better would you feel on a daily basis? Would you still be depressed? Would you still have anxiety? Would the problems that exist in your life now still exist in a year if you gave it your absolute all? I don't think so. I think one year of uninterrupted focus is going to lead to a completely different life, a completely different version of yourself, one that is unrecognizable. The next year of your life is going to happen one way or another. Time is going to pass anyway. You can come back and tell me that I'm wrong, that your life is exactly the same, but I'm willing to bet every single dollar in my bank account that you will look back and say that that was the best decision that I have ever made. And I have no idea how I was living my life before.